Hello and welcome. I'm Marilee Prophet, Senior Manager for the OCLC Research Library Partnership. And I want to thank you for joining us for today's special webinar, Re-Envisioning the Fabric of the Bibliographic Universe. This is a special works in progress webinar that we are recording in June 2020 to support subsequent discussions. We are doing this in support of the OCLC Research Library Partnership, a transnational network of research libraries. We offer extensive professional development opportunities, most offered virtually, enabling active international participation without travel. And I want to acknowledge the OCLC RLP, which both underwrites and inspires our work. If you are part of the OCLC RLP, I want to thank you for your continued support and input into our work. These are crucial to our success. Making knowledge more connected and discoverable online has been the expectation driving linked data efforts for several years. We are finally seeing practical applications surfacing from which libraries can now benefit. Moving from a traditional records-based approach to research description in order to represent the dream for knowledge graph, what have been the challenges encountered so far? In this session, we will explore the experiences of national and research libraries in linked data exploration, looking at milestones over time. We will also look at the journey that OCLC and others has been on transitioning from entity-based description research to prototyping and now to actual practices, covering work that has been undertaken with library partners right up to the present day. With the generous support of the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, OCLC recently announced the development of a shared entity, shared man, sorry, a shared entity management infrastructure. OCLC is inviting libraries who are interested in participating in this joint in this effort to join us. The promise of an ecosystem is poised to become a reality in just a little under 24 months when the infrastructure will become available, jointly curated by the community and by OCLC, making scholarly materials easier to find and use. And I want to give a hat tip to Kaylin Newton Davis for the title of today's presentation, which is inspired by her January 2020 OCLC Next blog post, An Insider's Look at Project Passage. And I encourage you to take a look at that blog post if you have not already. OCLC is a member-driven organization with over 18,000 member libraries worldwide. If you work for an OCLC member library, thank you for your participation in our organization. Research has long been an important component of OCLC. The, our mission in research is to scale and accelerate library innovation and collaboration. That member-driven focus for sharing important learning to, to libraries and that global perspective very much helped to frame today's presentation. So I am thrilled to welcome today our presenters, Aneta Dortman, and Karen Smith Yoshimura, who will explore the experiences of national and research libraries in linked data exploration, looking at milestones over time. We'll look at the journey that OCLC and others have been on transitioning from entity based description research to prototyping and now to the actual practices. So I'm going to turn things over to Aneta, who will kick things off for us. Take it away, Aneta. Thank you, Mary Lee. I am going to talk about the experiences libraries are making when trying to work with new platforms such as Wikidata. So first, let us look a little bit at the background for these developments, the current metadata landscape. For decades, libraries have created and shared bibliographic descriptions using the machine-readable cataloging MARC format. Hundreds of millions of MARC records are now available in online catalogs that show what libraries hold and make accessible to their patrons. MARC records and records in other similar library community standards 
also power key library activities such as resource sharing and collection development. But because these standards were developed about 50 years ago, MARC records can be understood only by library systems and are generally incomprehensible to data consumers elsewhere. Since about 2008, standards experts and the library community have looked to link data as potentially transformative for the bibliographic universe. In a linked data world, descriptions will make use of information in so-called knowledge graphs, featuring descriptions of the persons, places, or things of interest, commonly known as entities, that are connected to other entities via machine understandable relationships and persistent identifiers. This transition from human readable records to knowledge graphs really represents a paradigm shift. Knowledge graphs have the potential to replace or at least connect the many data silos that libraries use and to make library data comprehensible to data consumers outside the library world. Libraries engaged in special and digital collections management need more flexible approaches to what used to be authority management to better serve the rare and unique collections in their care and the researchers interested in them. Linked data offers the possibility to better model and reveal relationships and networks of collaboration and influence represented within and across these collections. Bibliographic information for research assessment purposes is often collected in systems specifically designed for research information management in dedicated RIM systems, also called CRISs in Europe, or in repositories. Libraries are often heavily involved in this activity, but the systems in use are rarely interoperable with traditional library systems, workflows, or standards. To populate them, sources such as Scopus, Web of Science, Google Scholar or Crossref are harvested at scale. Identifiers play a crucial role in this. The ORCID ID in particular is becoming the de facto standard researcher identifier in the scholarly communications ecosystem. Linked data offers the possibility to make use of these identifiers for the creation of a knowledge graph describing relationships within the scholarly communications landscape and beyond. Entity management in linked data environment could help bridge all these silos. As a participant in a recent OCLC linked data prototype phrased it, we need a shared community practice that isn't as restrictive as MARC and gives us more flexibility in what we can say about the entities and resources we're interested in. What you see here is the center of the linked open data cloud diagram hosted on the site mentioned above. The image in the upper right hand corner shows the full cloud, the larger image is central part. The linked open data cloud shows data sets that have been published in the linked data format. The most recent version contains over 1000 data sets with over 16,000 links. The lines connecting the circles are the links between the identifiers in the different datasets. These links build bridges across those datasets and bridges across different domains. Identifiers have also been called the glue in this context. The number of linked data sources published by the library community with the express purpose to become part of this cloud has increased over the years. National libraries release their catalogs as linked data and identifier hubs such as the Library of Congress ID.gov and OCLC's Virtual International Authority file were made available as linked data. Two data sets that we've pointed out here on the slide by the yellow arrows are the Virtual International Authority file on the right and Wikidata on the left, both pretty close to the center of the cloud. By contributing to or reusing identifiers from one or both of those identity hubs, library data can become a part of these bridges across different domains. In this context, libraries have begun to engage actively on Wikidata, a trend that could be strongly observed from at least 2018 onwards, 
B that Europeana Tech in Rotterdam in the spring of 2018 or at the Semantic Web and Libraries Conference in November the same year. Let us first clarify some terminology we are using in this presentation before moving on. First, when talking about the wiki universe, we need to distinguish Wikipedia, a multilingual web-based free content encyclopedia that you're probably all familiar with, from Wikidata, launched in 2012, a collaboratively edited knowledge base of structured data used by Wikimedia sister projects and others. It can be used by any interested party, human or otherwise, and importantly, Wikidata generates identifiers for every entity described. The identifier for the person Douglas Adams would be, very fittingly, the Q42 in the screenshot above. We also need to distinguish these two applications, Wikipedia and Wikidata, from the underlying software. For this presentation, it is important to note that Wikibase is the software that powers Wikidata, but can also be used to set up independent instances of structured data, independent of Wikidata. So, as I said earlier, libraries have begun to engage actively on Wikidata and have also begun to experiment with independent Wikibase instances. So, let us look at this in some more detail next. Why would libraries use Wikidata. Wikidata offers important functionality out of the box that libraries have long been missing in their traditional systems. Native support for multilingual interfaces and labels, for example. Field-level history of changes that allow for high level of quality control and reduces concerns about working in a shared environment. Wikidata has a comparatively simple, straightforward user interface that hides a lot of complexity from first sight and just recommends itself to crowdsourcing or community engagement projects and so forth. I could go on for much longer. Wikidata and Wikibase are also safe options for libraries because of the strong community support they receive. Library-specific training resources and documentation is available Wikidata is in an early phase of becoming part of the library carpentry curriculum. The large Wikibase developer community provides a growing set of tools and programs to help query, edit, or visualize the data, or enhance the user interface. Last but not least, many libraries feel they share values with the Wiki community and the Wikimedia Foundation. A focus on open knowledge, on operating as a nonprofit, and on community governance. So, libraries getting engaged with Wikidata can do so in a number of ways. Libraries may consume Wikidata as a linked data source or choose to contribute to Wikidata. Or they may wish to work with a separate Wikibase instance they implement locally. It all depends on the circumstances and, not least, the purpose of their engagement. And working with Wikidata can have all kinds of purposes. Enhancing existing data or descriptions in library catalogs, for example, with identifiers. Creating richer descriptions of archival or special collections. Enhancing the visibility of library resources. Enabling the community to contribute knowledge and expertise, and so forth. Ultimately, Wikidata or Wikibase are used to capture structured data in ways and formats not possible within traditional bibliographic or authority workflows. To create or publish linked data and, most importantly, to connect library data with a wider knowledge graph via identifiers. So, for example, the University of Wisconsin-Madison libraries enrich their catalog with author identifiers from a number of sources, including Wikidata. Here, a screenshot from Umberto Echo's Name of the Rose on the left, and the section Information from the Web from that full record on the right. 
And you may be able to see that information about education and notable works was pulled in from Wikidata. As part of this project, the library also registers faculty members in Wikidata, illustrating Wikidata's role as part of the Research Information Management Persistent Identifier Graph. The National Library of Sweden is engaged in a project with Wikidata to upload part of their national bibliography to Wikidata, mostly works that are used as references on Wikipedia and Swedish and their authors. The National Library of Wales even engaged a national Wikimedian, Jason Evans. They used Wikidata to enrich and enhance the metadata for images they shared with the Wikimedia Commons. By uploading metadata to Wikidata and pulling it back after a while, over time the library benefited from significant enrichments of their data. Getting geocodes for place names from Wikidata, for example, meant they could now present content on maps. Getting multilingual labels back from Wikidata meant they can suddenly offer their English-only metadata in Welsh, too, and in many other languages. Visualizations of the content are made a lot easier with tools readily available from the Wiki ecosystem. For example, in their recent project with a manuscript collection for which they have all their data and Wikidata, they were able to visualize the network of scribes and what manuscripts they contributed to, how they work together, in which groups, and so forth. Their current project is the sum of Welsh literature on Wikidata the Welsh bibliography. Again, pulling and rich data back from Wikidata means that they can apply much more complex filters and answer more complex research questions, which one of our authors also has a portrait in the National Gallery, which one of them had a Nobel Prize nomination or ever gave a speech in Parliament. Europeana encourages its contributing institutions to register identifiers and vocabularies in Wikidata, so Europeana can reuse them. Europeana favors Wikidata in this context because, as they state on their website, they prefer to use large, rather generic, and multilingual data sources, especially those where equivalent elements in other vocabularies are indicated, and also because Wikidata can bring together crowdsourced resources and authoritative datasets such as VIVE, and so guarantees a good balance between the authority and the quality we are looking for. So far, for using Wikidata. But why would libraries decide to use separate Wikibase instances instead, or in addition? These separate Wikibase instances are mostly used for exploration and experiment such as in the OCLC passage pilot, my colleague Karen is going to talk about it in a minute, for data ingest and reconciliation before merging the resulting data set with Wikidata, or very specialized use cases. Many domain-specific projects prefer to use a separate Wikibase instance to store highly specialized information in non-standard ways, perhaps even partially sensitive or even confidential, in ways not supported by the central Wikidata instance. Last but not least, Wikibase is also used to extend the scope of linked data work beyond just the library domain, in particular to include other cultural heritage institutions, such as archives and museums. With all these initiatives, an ecosystem of separate Wikibase instances is emerging, and a Wikibase registry has been set up to start tracking those. Discussions are also underway concerning the relationship of these separate instances with Wikidata. Think of a potential future Wikibase federation. Let's look at some examples. The German National Library is currently investigating the use of Wikibase as a potential replacement for, or complement to, their current infrastructure for their authority file, GND. This is in context of the initiative to open up their library authority file for use in the broader cultural heritage community. In November 2018, DNB hosted a first GNDCon, a conference or fan convention, around the GND authority file, jointly organized by the National Library, the GND Cooperative, and 
Wikimedia Deutschland, featuring Wikidata as an important part of the ecosystem. ABES launched the French National Entities File project in 2017 to develop an open data platform on which to manage controlled vocabularies, authorities, and entities. Their intent is to make collections discoverable and accessible and to enable the professional community to jointly create and maintain entities related to their resources while facilitating the use of these entities in local production environments. In 2019, the project includes a proof of concept implementation using Wikibase to support the Avenue project. Ultimately, the goal is to effect a bibliographic transition of catalogues to the web of data, as illustrated in the project logo here. The Dutch National Library is currently focusing on enriching their historical newspapers collection with linked named entities. For example, names of persons, locations and organizations mentioned in the newspaper articles that are linked to corresponding resource descriptions and international knowledge bases such as DBpedia, Wikidata and VIAF. They set up an enrichment infrastructure with an enrichment database that is able to store any type of enrichment for any object from the library collections without modifying the original data. Generally speaking, the enrichment database contains links between identifiers of objects from the library collections and related identifiers. Linking named entities in newspaper articles to resource descriptions in Wikidata offers new search functionality. Users are even encouraged to correct or remove links when they see wrong ones or add links. Let us see how this works in detail. The following is a portion of their demo of the functionality. Enjoy! Here we search for the rock group The Kings. Okay. We click on Properties and we select the property Uitvoerend Artist, which means the performer. The result will be articles mentioning songs from The Kings. When we now ask for extra information, we get a link to Music Web. Here we can listen to the music of The Kings. Lola. We see here also a wrong link. Lola points to an automobile branch instead of the song Lola. We can change this link or remove it. We choose for change to make a correction. A list of possible candidates will be shown and the song Lola is suggested as the most probable candidate. This is indicated by the green color. We select that one and then the link will be changed. And see here, the auto mobile branch Lola is replaced by the song Lola from the Kings. So, <clears throat> thank you, Aneta. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about OCLC experiences with linked data and Wikibase. OCLC has a long history of working with linked data, stretching back well over a decade. Back in 2009, <clears throat> OCLC began working to understand what it meant to publish linked data. This started with publishing our FACET Authority Subject Terminology, or FAST, and the Virtual International Authority File, VF, data as linked data and in 2012, we published all of worldcat.org as linked data. Our next set of work explored use cases for linked data. The Entity JS Research Project investigated end user discovery applications across descriptions of different entities, people, organizations, places, events, concepts, works, and our person entity lookup pilot explored the features and user requirements of a shared reconciliation service for personal names. 
In 2015, we began testing what processes and pipelines were needed to create original linked data, specifically focusing on the balance between computing power that OCLC can bring to the table and with the absolutely necessarily absolutely necessary decentralized domain expertise that our library partners bring to the table. By 2017, we had learned a great deal about all of the components that we needed to do um, to bring linked data at scale, whether it be to create, publish, or use. But we had not taken a step back to take a look at it holistically to determine how all of these components could fit together into a single infrastructure to allow us to actually curate linked data over time. So in 2017, we launched Project Passage using the Wikibase infrastructure that Aneta uh, described previously and tested how a user could create, edit, publish, and use linked data all in a single system working specifically with authority metadata. And the ongoing content DM linked data pilot is testing those principles with cultural heritage metadata. So all of this work and expertise culminated earlier this year when OCLC was awarded a Mellon Foundation grant to design, build, and publish a shared entity management infrastructure to help support linked data work by libraries around the world. This represents a transition from research to production, taking advantage of all OCLC's linked data research, prototyping, and lessons learned to build a production-ready infrastructure. First, I'll talk a bit more about our experiences with using Wikibase in Project Passage and the Content DM Linked Data Pilot. So the Project Passage ran from December 2017 through September 2018. Uh, 16 OCLC member libraries participated with the objective to create and evaluate a framework for reconciling, creating, managing bibliographic and authority data as linked data entities and relationships. The pilot Wikibase instance included 1.2 million entities from matches across Wikidata, VF, and WorldCat, which the 16 member library participants um, added to. So our report on the, what we learned from this experience was published last August. This example from Project Passage shows the entities represented in a, in a sacred musical composition commissioned for and performed at the consecration of Florence Cathedral in 1436. The items and properties describing the musical score, the consecration event, and the interconnections between the two were all added to the brief entity for the music work that was imported into Passage from Wikidata. This produced a network of relationships that exceeds the detail currently represented in corresponding MARC-based library authority records. This figure shows that the Nuper Rosarum Flores commemorates the consecration of the Florence Cathedral, but the inverse is also true. The consecration was commemorated by the motet. This inverse relationship could be automatically generated and revealed in the Project Passage discovery layer. This shows the Project Passage's discovery layer display of the entity shown in the previous slide. It generated the inverse relationship, the commemorated by relationship to the Nufra Rosarum Flores, uh, shown by the blue arrow here. Although discovery layers are usually considered a public facing interface, <clears throat> the project passage experience demonstrates that's also important for the metadata creators to see the impact of the entities and relationships they are entering immediately as part of the workflow. In this case, just having the relationship that the music commemorates the consecration of the cathedral <clears throat> suffices to also affect the display of the entity for the consecration of Florence Cathedral event. Another, <clears throat> another highlight from our Project Passage experience 
was the embedded multilingualism. This shows the Wikibase editor display with the language set to Chinese. There's no need to translate the name when entering Chinese. That can be handled by others using different language editors. Indeed, there are a variety of writing systems um, in, that, that are already represented in the labels in Wikidata, including Hindi, Korean, and Russian shown here. The multiscript support replaces language of cataloging and obviates the need for transliterations when we re-envision the fabric of the bibliographic universe. To populate knowledge graphs with library metadata, we need tools to facilitate the import of data created elsewhere <clears throat> and a discovery layer to allow metadata specialists to see the results of their effort without having to leave the metadata creation workflow. This was especially important to quench the temptation to include inverse relationships, which could be shown through a discovery application instead of the data itself. Most use cases demonstrate that we could enrich the descriptions in structured data with a precision that exceeded current library practices. And with the embedded multiscript support, people could add structured data in their own writing systems and thus minimize the need to also include transliterations as is in current library practices. The ability to change one's language interface replaces the language of cataloging we use now. Content DM is OCLC's digital collection management service. It's used by over 2,500 libraries worldwide and over 70 million digital records are managed through ContentDM today. It's record-based model um, with textual descriptions. This is a one-year pilot that will investigate how linked data can increase end users' ability to discover, evaluate, and use unique digital content and improve library staff efficiency with an easier way to manage the descriptive environment. We are currently working with five library partners pictured here. Uh, we made a lot of progress during phase one of the project. Um, as you'll see here, we created capabilities to import, clean, and reconcile existing content DM collections to authorities in VF and FAST. We implemented a prototype on to Wikibase our local instance of Wikibase. Uh, we created a plugin for Content DM to give existing collections added context using linked data and developed export paths for sharing data with external partners. We, additionally, we've also been building staff tools for use and review by the pilot partners and new tools for enhancing end user discovery. For a staff tool, this is uh, an image annotator developed to support new ways to describe and interact with digital metadata. This Explorer application connects digital content based on entity relationships in the underlying descriptions. As we continue to work through the final phase of the pilot, we are drawing from what we learned to inform our linked data initiatives. We have so much better understanding now on how to build entity management infrastructures and library staff needs for successful metadata enrichment. Metadata cleanup and reconciliation requires new tooling and a distributed effort to be scalable. So to give you a quick uh, overview of our newest project launch just this January, the Shared Entity Management Infrastructure. It's a two-year project um, with a $2.436 million grant from the Mellon Foundation, which is matched by OCLC. And this grant will support linked data management initiatives um, <clears throat> in the library and scholarly communications community. Uh, the production, it's meant to be a production infrastructure for both work and person entities, support multiple descriptive and encoding standards, um, 
promote the persistent the consistent use of persistent identifiers, but most importantly, it's a collaboration with the library community. Um, the goal is that when completed by in December 2021, we will have a production ready infrastructure that can be used as a foundation, a solid foundation for libraries, cultural heritage organizations, and scholarly communications communities to, ultimate, to ultimately make their materials more connected and discoverable on the web within that linked data cloud that Annette showed you earlier. Additionally, we anticipate that libraries will use this infrastructure to increase connections um, or the context between their materials and other relevant collections, improve the consistency and efficiency of metadata workflows across collections and material types, and improve their mark record quality and accuracy, which will result in more new efficient metadata workflows. In 2020, we are ramping up very quickly as we focus on data that OCLC already has, including authority data, bibliographic data, and other vocabularies that we maintain. And in 2021, we will look to add more data sources and refine them to bring them to an even larger scale. The features and functionality that we create will be primarily API-based but we will also be providing a basic user interface. And along the way, in six month increments, we will be testing with library partners and collaborating with the library community to make sure this infrastructure meets their expectations. So to quote um, our OCLC Vice President and Chief Strategist Larkin Dempsey, for linked data to move into common use, Libraries need reliable and persistent identifiers and metadata for the critical entities they rely on. And this project, the Shared Entity Management Infrastructure, begins to build that infrastructure and advances the whole field. No matter how far along the library is with using new data models, which includes BibFrame, or if they wish to continue to work in MARC, they, are, they will see improved quality and efficiency from this infrastructure project. Just as we have provided infrastructure for OCLC numbers and authority records to help improve discovery experiences and to connect systems, OCLC will create a new library infrastructure for persistent identifiers and connections to authoritative resources that will place library collections in a broader context. <clears throat> so these are currently the 22 members of the Shared Entity Management Infrastructure Advisory Group. As you can see here, the 22 in different institutions include public, academic, research, and national libraries who, that are now part of the advisory group. And we will continue to stay in close communication with additional linked data organizations, including the Linked Data for Production Group, the Program for Cooperative Cataloging, the ALA elects Director of Technical Services at Large Research Institutions, the OCLC Research Library Partnership, and more to ensure that this infrastructure will meet their needs. The speaker notes include the contact person representing each of the institutions shown here. This is the portion of the linked data cloud you saw earlier, this time filtered for just the bibliographic domain and you can find more information about OCLC's linked data work um, and other resources on the links of these exact uh, of, of these slides. Um, so all of our linked data work is also included at the URL shown here. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, I look forward to discussing the entire presentation with you at a date to be announced in the future. Thank you. So thank you so much to Aneta and Karen for their great presentation um, and this exploration of the fabric and future of the bibliographic universe. We look forward to discussions and this concludes today's webinar.